Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and it's a pretty girthy update video for the end game on Shock Nova, which turned out to be mostly Crackling Lance in the end game uh, Inquisitor using Doriani's prototype. So I did um, use Shock Nova for basically everything up to level 92 or some shit, um, and then figured out that Crackling Lance could be put in one for one in the build and just have bit more DPS for single target and then a bit um, safer of a gameplay in the end uh, for the uber bosses. So we're talking strictly uber content. Uh, without that, Shock Nova is basically what I would be doing happily and it is still nicer for clear. So for clear and for mapping, I was still using Shock Nova. But you can still definitely do Crackling Lance for um, clear uh, if you would rather and then have just bigger single target. But in the end, um, when I was like starting to take on some bosses, I figured I think it's going to be a lot easier with Crackling Lance for bosses, just because you can be range and you don't have to worry about the positioning. Because with Shock Nova, you have to position your double ring setup um, perfectly to have twice the amount of damage that you should have, basically, so that your rings overlap and you get two different hits. Uh, with Crackling Lance, it's basically just fucking wind it up and do some damage. I mean, the only issue is staying in intensifier range. So you can see the DPS ended up being pretty good there, even with Shock Nova. And the playstyle is completely acceptable with Shock Nova. But if we wanted the best possible Crackling Lance, the best possible Uber gameplay, um, first of all, you pick up an Echo Shrine and Accelerating Shrine, and then this happens. Uh, but you know, you can't guarantee that happening all of the time, especially for Ubers. Can you? We could pretend you can. But yeah, this is just showing off the ridiculousness of the shrines with um, putting up fanaticism, having free mana cost, and Crackling Lance um, Celestial MTX. It's pretty glorious. It gives you the girthiest, fattest beam you've basically ever seen and just goes absolutely ham. It was pretty fun to watch. Uh, with Shock Nova, it just distorts your character into a mess. Either way, this from here on out is just Crackling Lance gameplay, just a bit of bossing um, and then uber bossing and all of that. And as you can see, it is some pretty tasty DPS. So I did end up trying to min-max the character a bit um, since the video. Probably didn't really do too much. I got a few more levels and fine-tuned um, a few gems and all that. Uh, the biggest addition though would have been Woke Spell Echo. So I've never actually used that gem before. Um, because it's always been too expensive, and I figured that's kind of, you know, a bit unfair. Uh, it was only six exalts at the time, so it's the cheapest I think I've ever seen it, and it gives you 10% more damage than the spell echo I was using, because on every second hit, you get 20% chance to double damage, it ends up being a 10% more upgrade. Uh, so, you know, it's not a deal breaker for this type of a build, but it helps by all means to hit those bigger high rolls on the double damage. Um, otherwise, yeah, the build was, I think, basically as you saw it last video. So you can see that we're doing some pretty thick invites, like I can take on 50% damage and all kinds of different uh, mods if I need to in some of these invites, but the main thing is being able to kill things quickly. So we can guarantee killing at least one of these spawns almost every time. If we position ourselves better, you can kill like two of them at once, because uh, Kraken Lance can overlap nicely. Um, but I'd say overall, basically, just this is probably the best single target I've had this league and most other leagues. So there, this is Uber Shaper. I was just testing the Shaper beam damage as well uh, because it does have a portion of lightning. I wanted to see how much lightning damage it was doing. And lightning is still basically one of the most threatening things to the character. So Storm Striders, they don't one-shot you. They come close sometimes um, and depends on the content. And then... The occasional Mana Siphoner that spawns just kind of kills you pretty quick. It's not instant, but if you're not paying attention, it can definitely kill you. And that's all because of Doriani's prototype, so it does cause a bit of discomfort overall. Uh, we then do Uritsiri here, just a bit of DPS and then limit testing on um, a certain double flame blast because uh, the character is extremely thick against everything else, you know, 90 max res and good recovery and all that shit and some block and everything. So um, throughout most bosses, I was doing some limit testing to see exactly what I could and could not do um, damage taking wise. 
Uh, so it's pretty, you know, you can take a lot of different shit and still come out the other end completely fine. Um, but the main thing is that it's good DPS. So it's something like 30 million DPS, 30 to 40 million at its high roll. So we're talking fanaticism, we're talking um, focus up and arcane surge. So there's some things to line up and honestly it is a bit uncomfortable at times. Uh, having to constantly do that, but the it's it's definitely the most tolerable I've ever had fanaticism, and I think that's largely because I am actually tanky as fuck. So previously, when I've played fanaticism style builds, it's just kind of uncomfortable because you're managing not dying at the same time as like trying to keep fanaticism up. Whereas here, you line it up once at the start and then just you know take a bunch of shit from various bosses and shit and this is a feared with a, a whole bunch of extra damage and frenzies and stuff that uh, I thought you know it'd be okay but you still have to play the game a bit I suppose it's all at once feared with a bunch of extra damage it does actually hit really fucking hard against most things um, and that's where we're at I think that's where we're at feared used to be can you kill it you know two coming out at a time on a white invite and then it's like it escalated to can you kill them all at once and then that became kind of a joke so then it's like can you kill them all at once double the modifiers and also start adding cilia modifiers and then yeah you can still be doing that on plenty of builds so power creep thy name is path of exile um so what else do i need to mention at this point um it did take on all the ubers like i said probably the best dps i've ended up having uh, on demand for any character and probably the best ubering character overall just because you can't afford to make mistakes and I did do haven't bricked a single fight haven't bricked anything um, just you know died a couple times on pretty much every uber while either fucking something up or limit testing something uh, you can see that serious damage was ridiculous I mistimed my um, fanaticism on the last phase and still got a decent bit of DPS on him but um, yeah it was a bit of a mistime and then I died to standing in the degen puddle but overall you can see that the um, Call of the Void shock effect, um, chill effect, is actually putting in quite a bit of work. It is basically perma-chilling everything uh, to its maximum, and then that's also reducing its incoming um, damage that it's doing, which does kind of get balanced out because a lot of different bosses have extra lightning damage. So, you know, I'm the tankiest thing I've ever been, but at the same time, um, you got some glaring weaknesses against certain bosses, like Eater of Worlds, for example. Bullshit. Just about everything he does apparently does lightning damage, like f some fizzes lightning, some extra lightning spell, all kinds of just fucking lightning, and it's a bit unfortunate. Either way, it's still a comfortable enough fight. Like I said, about as comfortable as I've ever done anything um, for any of the Ubers. Uh, the DPS just lets you basically, you know, softcore your way through things if you really need to just line up a few good damage phases and things will die and you'll see that on the um, uber exarch so i guess lastly i'll say um, the character i mean it's pretty fine-tuned it's probably the most sort of well-rounded geared character i've ever had and that is largely thanks to recombinators so you know it's not technically that expensive but realistically if you want to look at the gear and say what's it going to take to get to that same sort of gear probably 20 to 50x depending on your luck and all that and we can still min-max even more if you ended up like getting a plus two Dorianis, which is 10x. Well, that could take you to like 40 to 50 million damage. There's still some min-max to do if you still want to take this even higher. And uh, I'd say it's worth it if you really want to. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and drop this um, Uber Exarch fight for you. Hope you guys enjoyed the character. I think it's going to be build of the league by far. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. <laughs> Come on, man, I ran with her. I swear Maven was going to delete that one. I swear she was. She was about to. Shut the...
Yeah. Excuse me? He disintegrated like where I was still running, not where I was. What have I got? Man, everything's on. I'm just probably fucking it up by focusing on damage and fanaticism and stuff still. When I shouldn't be. Like this. Ah. No. Dude, again? I shall extinguish them all. Hmm. This is fine. Alright, so if I didn't play like shit, that would have been fine. That's definitely the best chance I've had of killing this boss on any character so far. 